Welcome back to Snacks and Facts. Thank you for sticking with us during this break. And for those of you who are new, welcome. My name is Caitlin Hill and I'm an old YouTuber. I'm also an actor and a theatre maker. You can find out more about me and what I do by following the links below. Let's get to it. Here's more snack-sized history and this thing that I'm gonna eat. You sound like you're from London. What? Right, I just got back from the UK, thus my cute little accent. Today's snack is a Branston pickle and cheese sandwich because I could rarely afford anything but sandwiches from Tesco or Waitrose while I was in London because the GBP is unfavorable AF. So when I wasn't eating cheese or the nine pound Indian dinner box for two from Sainsbury's, I was eating a sandwich with crisps and tea. And unlike my experience of sandwiches at grocery stores in Australia, I did not have one bad sandwich. Never soggy, never dry, never stale. The Mighty British Sandwich. I mostly had egg and cress sandwiches, so I thought that I would look up some of Britain's weirder, more artistic offerings. This is art. Here we go. Okay, I'm just gonna eat it. Which corner? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it smells worse than it tastes, kind of like Vegemite. Like I thought it was going to taste really bad, but it tastes like pickle and brown. It tastes like brown. Brown. No offense, but offense. Tangy. A lot of interesting things happened in England on this day, December 5th, 5th, 5th. <laughs> there was in great- <laughs> I need a burp. Ooh. Tangy. A lot of interesting things happened in England on this day, December 5th. The Great Smog of London in 1952, which was most recently featured in The Crown on Netflix. Did you see that episode? I found it fascinating and frightening. During the five-day event of smog, visibility was down to a metre. Some people couldn't even see their feet, and about 4,000 people died. <gasps> I'd like to discuss it more, but there isn't enough time, so there are links below that we can talk about. We can talk, actually talk. On this day, in 2004, the Civil Partnership Act was passed, allowing same-sex couples to receive the same rights as married couples, such as hospital visitation, tax benefits, pensions, and inheritance. It's been in the news recently because it has just been extended to heterosexual couples that also want these rights without having what some consider the patriarchal burden of the term marriage. I think that's very cool. But let's go back now to September to happy little me before I fully grasped the devastating reality of the currency conversion rate in London. Mm. Here I am walking over Westminster Bridge, purposely positive and cheerful towards Big Ben, which is currently silent until 2021 due to conservation work. It is the longest time Big Ben has been silent in 157 years. And you can see the London Eye behind me, which I thought I would totally ride later, and I totally didn't ride it later! Whee! I spent a lot of time in the Natural History Museum. I even napped on the museum floor on my birthday because I am a Big nerd. huge fan of the Dead Puppet Society's new play, The Wider Earth. It's a story about Charles Darwin's voyage on the Beagle many, many years before he wrote The Origin of the Species. It's so interesting, superbly acted, it's got amazing puppets, and the projection design is just breathtaking. There's a link below for details. The Natural History Museum first opened in 1881, but its collection dates back to 1753, when Parliament acquired 71,000 items owned by the recently deceased Sir Hans. Sloan. The acquisition would create the British Museum. After several decades of tomfoolery in the department, the new superintendent, paleontologist Richard Owen, could see that the natural history departments within the British Museum needed their own space and set about getting the department its own building. If you look up in the Hensley Hall, you can see 162 panels featuring paintings of plants from around the world. There are also 72 monkeys holding onto the arches across the hall. Alfred Waterhouse designed the new museum after the original winning architect died and he had his sketches checked with the museum scientists so that they were as accurate as possible. I love it when art and science works together. During my visit to the museum, there was a four meter, that's a 13 foot long blue marlin. It's one of the largest whole species in the museum's collection, being slowly preserved in glycerin. This marlin stranded itself on a beach in Wales in 2016, which is odd because this species is usually found in warmer waters like the Indian and Pacific Oceans, so for it to be found off cooler waters is curious and a little alarming. It is significant as it may be another example of the severe impact of climate change. A lot of people walking around looking at the blue marlin called it a swordfish, but do you want to know how to tell the difference? It's all in the fin. Blue marlin fins have a dip in them, whereas swordfish fins are sharper and look more like a feather. Swag. 
This next thing may look like boring seaweed. It does. But it's actually broad-leaved horn rack, which sounds like something out of Harry Potter, which I'm not all about, but um, we'll move on. The broad-leaved horn rack is a species of bryozoans. Bryozoans are found in every ocean and they are helpful indicators of climate change. They are like world builders. We need them. If you're interested, I have a link below. Just accidentally knocked over a tiny child, so now it's, it's time to leave. Time to leave. Dinosaurs! <laughs> My favorite fact from this exhibit is that the only evidence we have of two dinosaurs fighting with each other comes from the skeletons of the protoceratops locked in combat with a velociraptor. Shortly before they were both buried under a landslide. So how was your day? Let me know in the comments. I've asked this question every week, but I don't think I ever really made it clear that I actually want people to answer. I want us to be able to put our days into perspective when looking at history, to either feel a bit better or at least know that you are not alone in whatever you are facing today. See you next week and thank you for watching. <laughs>